Now and then on various social media, you see a thing like, retweet the money frog, and 5,000 will be deposited in your account. Or some bullshit variation of that. I never really felt compelled to retweet or share those things because I always thought it was stupid or for susceptible people. Even when I was at my lowest and had to scrape the bottom of my drawers for cents, I didn't do shit with these things. You know why? Because I knew that the only way to get money was not through chain mail, but to get my ass to work every morning. Even if depression and anxiety kicked my ass, I stood up and I walked to that shitty job at Michael's because that's what adults do. You see, they don't rely on superstitions to make a living. And because of that, I never really interacted with chain mail or posts or whatever. I never opened a mail from Prince Arubald from Madagascar wanting me to unlock some super fortune. But I was poor. I mean, let's face it, even working 40 hours at Michael's paid me the bare minimum. I had enough for my rent, food, and utilities. And then I had a grand old hundred bucks left for me to decide if I ever save it or spend it. Now, since I can't get through my day without coffee, I spend about half of it on coffee throughout the month. Then maybe one fast food meal on a night when my depression is too intense to cook, and I crave the serotonin only some chicken nuggets from Mickey D's can satisfy. Other nights, to save money, I eat peanut butter toast. You know, I just be like that sometimes, you know? But one night, when my darkness addled brain couldn't find the strength to resist, I retweeted one of those posts and decided to add a comment. You see, I'm not the self-loathing type. Despite being mentally ill, I don't go all woe is me about it. I try to stay rational. I tell myself that it's not my fault, that my brain is wired differently. Everyone struggles and has different struggles, and mine are why, at age 32, I'm still working part-time for Michaels instead of doing something I want. Like, being a real artist. But I don't blame myself for my depression. It's an illness. And because of that, I try my best not to give in or give up. But sometimes, man. You know, sometimes it's just too hard. And that one night, with that tweet, I don't know why. I just got so angry. It was your usual. It was a picture of a smiling dog being retweeted. It looked like a husky, but someone put some captions all over it, and most of the photo was dark. The dog was in a barely lit room, and there was a beckoning hand coming from the left. Anyway, it was a bit blurry, and that dog's mouth looked weirdly human-like. But that's besides the point. The point is that some fucker added a caption like, Retweet the smile dog to get good financial news this week. Hell. And so I did, I retweeted it. But I didn't just retweet it. I vented like 10 years of frustrations in a few sentences. I called people lazy motherfuckers. So that nothing good would come out of this tweet, and that people just needed to get out their asses no matter how hard it was. I mainly was venting for myself, probably trying to convince myself that, yeah, all I needed to do was get off my ass. But I quickly realized that this would bring me backlash, so not even five minutes after posting my rant, I deleted it. I felt utterly drained and laid on my back, staring at my ceiling for maybe an hour in the darkness of my room. I eventually turned off my laptop and went to sleep without bothering with a shower or brushing my teeth. I'd do it tomorrow, I thought, since Saturday was a day off anyway, and I didn't need to show up to work. 
I woke up the next day. Around noon. Feeling as exhausted as if I hadn't slept a wink. The first thing I did was turn on my laptop. And I realized I'd received 465 notifications. All of these, without exception, were notifications from the post I was sure that I deleted. I mentally scolded myself for failing to do something as simple as deleting a tweet and mass deleting everything else. Then I opened up my Twitter and I realized that I had in fact deleted the retweet and the notifications I got were for direct messages on Twitter. 465 messages all having the same headline. Retweet the smile dog. But this time, there was no to get good financial news this week. Just 465 messages of this goddamn weirdly smiling husky and a link to the original tweet. I got angry again and closed my laptop. Someone probably saw my rant and decided to troll me. Someone had a lot of fucking time on their hands to be sending 465 messages with the same line and link. I mean, isn't there a messaging limit on Twitter? And so I decided to use my phone instead, since looking at my computer pissed me off. I was going to play some Final Fantasy gacha on my cell phone instead, since I didn't have the motivation to get out of bed, pee, brush my teeth, and start the day. When I opened my phone, my eyes widened in disbelief. 465 text messages. And guess what all of them were about? I mean, did I get doxxed by that Twitter maniac? The constant beeping of the notifications as the messages came in drove me insane. So I muted my phone and mass deleted them again. Also, I'd like to say that 465 is a random number, but it wasn't. It's my wage. That's what I make in a week's worth at Michael's for working about 30 hours. Six hours every day from 10 to 4. It would be a good wage if I worked full time, but they didn't want to give me the full time employee's benefits. And that goddamn smiling dog was mocking me. What? If I retweeted it, it would have had my boss giving me the full time I demand every six months since I started working there five years ago? <laughs> it was a joke. I got even angrier thinking about it. And to those of you who feel ticked and want me to find another job, thank you for forgetting that I'm mentally ill. Do you know how much I need stability in my life? I don't want to switch jobs when I've been at Michael's for five years, and this is the only thing that keeps me from going insane. So I turned off my phone instead. Spent the rest of the weekend busying myself, drawing or doing things that gave me instant satisfaction, like playing games on my PS4. Now things went from bad to incredibly worse when Monday came and I went into work. Everyone at Michael's got a month's notice. Michael's was relocating to the next town in the new mall they'd just built. Of course, we could keep our job if we desired, but the shop would be smaller and the positions would be limited. Instantly, I felt my back being covered in sweat and the fear of losing my employment washed over me like a tsunami, breaking all the walls I built around myself. I saw the dread on my co-worker's face, and I knew it was a time-sensitive question. I needed to talk to my manager about getting a job at the new location as soon as possible, but with my continuous asking for a full-time position, I might have shot myself in the foot. I knew he thought I was annoying as fuck because every time I tried talking to him, he looked exasperated. I felt the ground dissipate under my feet because I was slowly convincing myself I wouldn't be able to keep my job at Michael's, even though I depended on it for everything. Not just finances, as I said earlier, for stability. It might not be my dream job, but damn. 
It was the only thing I had going on in my life. I couldn't lose it. My lips and tongue went dry, and it almost hurt when I swallowed. If I can even call it that. See, the knot in my throat was tight, and my heartbeat was so loud that I could barely hear the manager as he said the company was evolving, and great things were waiting ahead. My head was spinning, and as soon as he finished his speech and told us to get to work, I went to the bathroom to splash some cold water on my face. And then I walked straight to my manager. But I wasn't the only one. Three of my co-workers were already there. And he was telling them to get to work. That we could all discuss that on our off time. I went to work. And those hours were the longest of my life. When I finished my shift, I tried again. I went to my manager's office. But... He was already gone for the day. I went back home with that knot moving down to my gut, burning far hotter than I wanted it to. I got home and sat on the toilet for an hour, having a panic attack. Whenever I get one of those, I have to go to the bathroom and I just sit there for a while. See, the cramps are real, and it's the only place I could feel safe and have access to cold water. When the crisis passed, I went into the kitchen and made myself some plain rice in the cooker, since my stomach wouldn't handle anything heavy at the moment, and I ate it in silence. I was still a bit feverish and exhausted when I got under my covers and turned down my laptop, only to see 465 messages again. Now I expected the same out of my phone, so I turned everything off, rolled on my side, and buried myself under the blankets. I eventually fell asleep and forgot to put my alarm on. I woke up the next day around noon again, more than two hours late into my work. I had a call in sick, and my manager was furious. If I weren't 100% certain, I wouldn't have the job at the new location. Now, I was confident. After mass deleting the new 465 messages from my email and phone, I curled up, eyes burning and unblinking, as I got lost in my thoughts. Every time I blinked, I saw that smiling dog with human teeth and his black and white fur coat. It was a husky. I also felt that since I saw that picture, nothing had gone according to plan. The first night I saw it, I went to bed without caring about my hygiene. Then, every day I got this link and pictures sent both to my email and phone, the notifications forcing me to turn everything off. And with Michael's relocating and me missing a day, things couldn't go any worse. Or, so I thought. Then I got into work the next day and got glares from my manager. I fucked up with a customer, and at the end of the day, we were announced that only 12 positions would be open for the new location. We were 28 employees at the current location, which meant less than half of us would secure a position. I also kept seeing that smiling dog everywhere. A client with the dog leashed outside the building? That dog was smiling at me, and its coat changed colors to match that of the picture. I wanted to talk to my manager, but I thought it would be best if I just waited a day, seeing how he was still angry that I missed my shift the previous day. I went back home, ate a peanut butter toast, and I crawled back into bed again. And I mass deleted those 465 messages again. I was tired. I was so tired. I just didn't know what else to do. Things were not looking up for me, and I didn't know how to restore it. The next day at work was just as god-awful as the previous one. I had to restock the picture frames, and much to my dismay, every single picture placed in those frames turned into the images of that smiling dog. I got so overwhelmed I went to the bathroom to splash some water on my face, but it didn't help. 
I still felt feverish. My guts were in a knot, and I was on high alert. I nearly jumped out of my skin when I returned because a customer tapped me on my shoulder. I scared that poor older woman so much, she went to find help with someone else. And of course, my manager saw everything and sent me back home for the rest of the day. Hell, I was on the verge of falling apart. I felt like I was a circling failure in a rapidly decaying orbit. And then, the notifications came pouring in. 465 on my computer. 465 on my phone. I let out a scream I didn't know I was withholding, and I threw my phone across the room. It slammed against the opposite wall and fell into a pile of dirty clothes I didn't have the heart to wash in the past week. But luckily, it didn't break. And it didn't even so much as have a scratch on the screen. So I could still hear the notifications coming in. I waited for a minute for them to pass. And they didn't stop. Every time I blinked, I saw that dog face. I hadn't known peace since this tweet came into my life, so I stood up and grabbed my phone, and I retweeted it. In an act of defiance or maybe desperation, I spent three hours retweeting that fucking smiling dog. Hell, I retweeted it until I had cramps in my finger, and I continued after that. I retweeted it four. 165 times to be exact. Then I went to the shower, I brushed my damn teeth, and I went to bed without eating. I fell asleep almost instantly, and I slept like a log until my alarm clock woke me up. I went to work, and my manager came at me instantly. I was sure he was going to fire me, but at this point, well, I was too exhausted and drained to feel anything anymore. All the panic I had the day before was gone. And that morning, when I woke up, there were no notifications on my phone or laptop. I'd at least managed to get rid of the smiling dog. But I got pulled into my manager's office, pretty sure that I was going to lose my job. That he was just going to give me my slip. So... You wanted a full-time job, didn't you? <laughs> Shit, my ears must be playing tricks on me. As we said yesterday, we only have 12 positions at the new location. You've been with us for more than 5 years. And on those 12 positions, 3 are full-time. Do you want one? My manager laughed, seeing my surprise. But the rest of our discussion is still blurry to me. The bottom line is, I got a full-time job now, and I'll be moving to the new location. Hell, I can't help but think that retweeting that smiling dog for good financial news this week had to do something with it. Everything turned to shit when I retweeted and deleted, but now that I retweeted, huh, I know it's stupid just because it's chainmail, but... What if...